Yeah. So right. you'd like to be like the first Kickstarter to deliver early ever? <laughs> um, <laughs> like we've, we've, this was I've, a slip. yeah. But but I've got like a hundred plus Kickstarters and like it's very frustrating when people deliver late and it's super frustrating when they seemed like they knew what they were doing and then it's clear that they don't because they ship like two years late. Right. right. Um, so I, I, we spent a long time waiting to launch until we knew right. or thought we knew at least i hope we know right. <laughs> like, like what we were doing we have competitive bids for pretty much all the parts of this at huh. different scales cool and so that was one of these things like we didn't know huh. when we launched if we were going to sell 500 keyboards or 5,000 yeah. keyboards right pretty sure we we're going to sell 50,000 keyboards <laughs> um but we also we 5,000 is about the point where we flipped that tier to sold out and then and then open up the 1,000 keyboards for may 6,000 key, uh, keyboards for June. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, like, we are well aware of the places where we, where we would start to fall down. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that is hardest to scale is the milling. Okay. But that's, I mean, but that said, there are many milling shops. We oh, yeah, yeah. Milled. Yeah. Um, the longest lead time single thing is probably the injection molds for the keycaps. Okay. Um, because the way you make the way you make those is you take a giant hunk of steel and you carve out the inverse of the keycaps. Oh. Um, and that's also the single most expensive part of this hmm. because it's a big upfront expense. So that's somewhere between ten and fifty grand just right. for the injection molds. Okay. Um, the upside of that is that the, our per keyboard cost for keycaps is. Low. Low. It is single digit dollars for mm -hmm. keycaps, painting them, laser engraving them, and clear coating them. Cool. Um, so, so basically, if an investor stepped up and so, footed like you know maybe hundred thousand yeah, dollars, you know. So just to be to be clear, so we we have right. taken a tiny little bit of VC from uh, from Bloomberg. Okay. We blogged about this about a month ago because we yeah. it's, we weren't trying to hide it. Yeah. But it's also like it's not like hey look we're a VC funded company. Yeah. They invested in us as a toy. Okay. Like they invested in us because the guy who runs the fund wanted uh -huh. a keyboard and thought it would be neat, and his yeah. and the people who work for him don't get to say no. Right. No. <laughs> but, but I'm I'm yeah. thinking I'm I'm just yeah. saying like you know if it, the way I'm hearing it yeah. it's like a it's a one time investment, it'll get you you know your uh, almost like you know for the future like mm -hmm. the the molds and everything right. created and then you get into the part where you know you you maybe have you may be suc be successful. Right. At like you know customizations, you yeah. know like uh, I want a I want a pink key. Why right. can't I get that? You know. Yeah, and that's it is. Um, and so one of the things that we need to balance so. is when you get injection molds made, you can right. make them out of hard steel or right. soft steel or aluminum. Right. And they last for different numbers. Numbers of, of uses. Years. Okay. And the thing we do know is that we are gonna whatever we ship as the model one. We hope it's really good, but we bet we're going to learn something from the keycaps. Right. And so we don't want to invest a lot of money in a mold that's going to last 15 years. Correct. The first time out. We would much yeah. rather build something and then, you know, be able to do another thing. And if the first thing was really catastrophically wrong, when we do the second sets of, you know, the second round, be able to say, okay, hey, everybody, um, <laughs> you know, if you pay postage and like three bucks, we'll send you new keycaps because yeah. we know we did it wrong. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, it's. it's pretty, we don't know how long it'll take. Yeah, we think we've we think we've set it to a conser a conservative timeline, mm. um, because we don't want we don't want to let you down. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to be those guys. Yeah. Um, that said, when we screw up, we're gonna try to be as honest and forthright about it as we can. Um, that is scary as hell. Yes. But <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no. no. I mean, it's, like it's scary to me yeah. to be like. Yeah. Here's this thing I did wrong that is going to delay everything three weeks. Right. Um, and the thing, and if, especially if the thing I did wrong was I was sleepy and skipped a step. <laughs> um, but you, you know, but I mean, to that point, yeah. at this point, everybody who's like on Kickstarter and yeah. GoFundMe, I mean, th yeah. they know that. Yeah. Like, you know, they've invested already. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I not, not to say that that's the standard now. Yeah. But yeah, if it's it's a good aspiration to yeah. meet the deadlines, you know. And manufacturing related delays, yeah. they, I mean, everybody understands that, you know, yeah. that happens because of yeah. different economies or whatever, manufacturing yeah. wise. So, yeah, so it would be cool to actually see, you know, after the Kickstarter is done, yeah. you know, the next uh, design challenges that you are going to take, you know, yeah. see what, what comes out of that. 
yeah. in the future. It's so weird to have this one tiny little hobby keyboard kit that I designed <laughs> like five months ago on a yeah. weekend just for mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, now it's um, like... Well, that, um, that our friends at Mousetrap want to sell. Oh, okay. And I... They could have launched it five months ago. Yeah. But we sort of said there's no way, like, that will wait until after the Kickstarter because I don't want someone to even think that I'm. Yeah, you're messing ready. Yeah. yeah, you're ready to ship that right well, right away. And don't want that to be our first product. Correct. Like, that's a hobby product for some, for. Yeah. people who like a very specific thing. So uh, let me ask you this, like Mass Drop, I'm glad you ben mentioned yeah. them because I know a lot of people that um, try to take the, uh, they try to learn the art of you know creating keyboards um, and they have actually succeeded at doing their independent builds of yeah. keyboards. Uh, would, would your project like appeal to them as equally as well as like uh, somebody new that's coming from like the regular, you know, QWERTY keyboard? Um, appeal to people who shop on Mass Drop or oh, oh no, who've actually already accomplished, uh, you know, their own cuts of like, you know, custom keyboards. Um, there are plenty of people who have backed the Model 1 who have... Already, already they're, they're already... They already have okay. an ErgoDox. Yeah. And there have been plenty of people complaining that this is coming out the same year as the ErgoDox Infinity and, uh, and oh, the okay. Axios. Okay. I'm so poor. Oh, okay. Um, the the folks who are who are really into keyboards, yeah, they're into keyboards, yeah. Um, and our goal, I mean, our goal is to do something that's a little bit broader and is designed for people. Okay. And that's that's a lot of the. Okay, whole, so your that's your what your intent was to actually target you know that demographic. Okay, yeah, like, that's cool. You know, that's the whole. Yeah. Yes, it's open hardware. But yeah. It's open hardware in that you can open yeah. it, huh. not in that you need a soldering iron before it works. Yeah. No, I'm really particularly excited on the uh, programmatic, like, you know, because now, uh, you know, a five-year-old would look at the keyboard. Like, right now, if I'm a five-year-old, I would be looking at it, like, wow, so many colors on it. That's cool. Like, you know, can I just, like, detach it and run away with it? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, just put, like, two double A's, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. There's many ways to kind of address that. But, but yeah, this is this is great, man. This is... This is awesome. And especially the fact that you've uh, designed it like a butterfly. See, that's another design aesthetic. Whose idea was that? So the butterfly was what we like to call emergent. Oh, emergent, okay. It was okay. not actually really originally intentional. Okay. You want to show off the heart and you can see the... I mean, you can... I mean... Yeah, or the heart design I mean, or... Also, yeah. I mean, so it's if you ignore the red, yeah. the black and the white keys look kind of a little bit sort of like a heart. Yeah. I mean, this one was a friend was like, hey, that keyboard looks like a heart. You should put a heart on it. Yeah. Um, the butterfly design. So what's really funny is the very first version of the thing that was a butterfly design, mm -hmm. it was actually supposed to be black and yellow acrylic and look like a bat wing. Oh, um, okay. Which would have been dumb. Mm -hmm. um, but they couldn't get the black and yellow acrylic, so it was clear. Yeah. It looked like the butterfly that it should have. Right. But the actual butterflyness. Mm hmm what we needed is we needed some wood up at the top to protect your keycaps. Okay. And then we needed a palm rest. We needed a right. place for your palm to go so that you keep your hands in a reasonable in a reasonable position. Right. So it just kind of emerged. Right. And, than, and then yeah. you start thinking about well, you want to kind of minimize the amount of extra wood you use, right. so you pull it in here. Yeah. Um, and it was, and it mm. looks kind of like a butterfly. Yeah. Um, cool. Any other questions, audience? I had a question. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm really interested in like crowdsourcing stuff. So I'm I'm interested like what what was the process for you going from I have this product and now I'm gonna crowdsource it? Like what's the process for getting a video done and did you like hire out any like sure. media promotion? Um sure. yeah. I mean you wanna, I'll, I'm happy to <laughs> You wanna talk about that? Yeah, let, let kind of right. talk sure. about yeah, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so for getting a video we Put up a like we we thought about doing it ourselves and then we looked at like footage that we had taken and it was all terrible. Mm. Um, and I don't think every project needs to have like a professional video. That if you are good at video storytelling, like you can take something on like an iPhone or like a good like DSLR camera and edit it together and not pay anyone and I think that's fine. Um, and I've seen some good videos that I know were made that way. Um, we ended up hiring someone to do it um, because, like, we didn't have that skill set. Um, so we had put up a like, like we watched a whole bunch of Kickstarter videos, figured out what we liked and what we didn't like, and kind of wrote up like a brief, basically, of like 
we want yeah. something that's three minutes long, it's right. going to cover this, we want to, you know, have you interview some of the people who, like, beta tested for us and include that. Um, you know, we're based in California, and we posted it on Craigslist, and then about, like, five or six different sites that are basically just, like, where people put proposals and then videographers, like, reply to them. Nice. Um, and the one that... We picked, it was a guy who found us on a site called Gennaro.tv um, and he was within our budget and <laughs> kind of funny thing, um, I found out like we went to a hackerspace that was by like my old high school so I posted about it on the high school along my Facebook page um, and we had chosen this videographer because he had done the video for Gustin jeans which are like fancy like Japanese denim salvage jeans that are made in San Francisco and he just like I really liked the video um, and it turns out that it was like an, an alum from my high school from a couple years earlier had like hired him to do that for their mm. jeans company um, so that's like and then for the video we ended up we had some footage like I would say like documenting whatever you do if you're working on a project, yeah, like you never know when it's gonna ha come in handy, and you can't go back in time to like film stuff. Redo it. Or oh yeah. And, stuff. <laughs> and we haven't been great at yeah. that, to be honest. So one of the things we've seen at a couple of hacker spaces is, as we've been going around, they have two cameras hung by the front door with um, iFi cards in them, mm -hmm. and anytime you do something on one of your projects, you should take a picture. It gets uploaded to the hackerspace Flickr feed, right. and then when you're doing your write-ups, it's just on the web for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Well, actually, at, at Synhack, I believe I'm the only one who kind of pushes it really, really hard. So that's you know, you, you're seeing me do this right yeah, now. I'm getting better at it. <laughs> I, know, kind of I know, I know, I know. Well, well, like, like you know, I. I do it like even outside of Synhack. Yeah. I actually do like, like tech talks and like getting cheap ambient cameras yeah. so people can yeah. just get you know. And then it's, it's like I have camera, I shall shoot. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So you Devin. guys just surpassed three hundred thousand dollars on your Kickstarter. Yay. Oh my goodness! That's five awesome. Minutes ago, I've been awesome. Kind of That's a milestone. <laughs> Father's Day. <laughs> And you still got 24 days to go, so it's gonna yeah. be yeah. yeah, yeah, it's gonna be interesting, like the final cap, you know. Like yeah, uh, you're gonna be busy for about a year. <laughs> We're gonna be really busy for a real long time. Delivery, um, delivery. That's good to be like. Yeah. The, yeah. The problem with doing a startup like this is like, it takes a lot of work with physical products. Like, you can't do like, oh, we're just gonna have a hackathon this weekend mm -hmm. and like make a web app and we can see if anyone if there's a market for it. Yeah. Um. And like, there's always a part of us in the back of our mind that like we have this very particular vision for what we want to make, mm -hmm. and we don't know if anyone really wants it. And, yeah. Like until yeah. people are actually willing to like pay you with a credit. No, card. I. You know, one one thing in, <laughs> one thing I particularly enjoyed about your story arc yeah. is that, um, like you know, you kind of didn't want to. You you kind of got the feelers first, you know, because yeah. yeah. a lot of makers they just kind of make. They yeah. don't they don't have the patience to probe. Yeah. The, you know the the community, so I mean I I think I yeah. I think uh, I give you you know yeah. props for like you know using your skills in software to kind of at least like reach out get the feelers like you know so, I got this idea but I mean I really would want to work on it if right. you know you, a lot of people would have you spin the interest that in, in a very nice positive light the way I think about it is uh -huh. that I am incredibly release shy I'm, oh it's the like okay. I'm not sure it's good enough to be worth anyone seeing right so I'll just work on it some more. Okay. Um, and so that has a lot to do, a lot yeah. to do with why you know. It's right. Like, and I try to talk about it a little bit to yeah. try to find out. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, I mean, there's stuff we learn because we put it in front of other people. Okay. Correct. Like, yes, the feedback. We yeah. learned stuff this week. Like we yeah. have design changes we're making because of watching people at interact spaces this yeah. week. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's cool. Let's see. Let's see, other things about trying to get to a crowdfunding campaign from. From a hobby project. Um, oh, getting press. Yeah, yeah, we like we didn't hire a PR firm or anything like that. I don't think I regret it because they're super expensive and everybody I know hates PR people. Oh. Um, huh. Okay. <laughs> but at the same time, um, we haven't actually gotten much press coverage. Like, oh, okay. It's mostly been <clears throat> people who are on our mailing list who found us some other right. way. Like we got a fair bit of coverage. Of, like a couple of times Jesse's given the like how to build your own keyboard talk um, and we got coverage of that yeah. and right. some of the same reporters like just 
or like that was new and interesting and different and like right. oh you're a product um, that's launching on crowdfunding that's no longer interesting oh like, that okay would have been interesting three years ago three years but, ago like, hmm. now it's like three hundred thousand dollars like for me that's like a huge amount of money yeah. that like we've convinced yeah. people to trust us yeah. to take so yeah. we can give them this product yeah um, and for them they're like the coolest cooler was you know millions and millions and you're interesting i right. never i never realized that you know that would be a gap yeah. like yeah i mean um be public about what you're working i mean assuming that you they, that you can be public about it yeah blogging about it tweeting about it having a play, having a mailing list that people can subscribe to to find out um building basically the thing you need to go to crowdfunding is your own mailing list um Generally, the number that Kickstarter gives is that 80% of your sales will come from you, 20% of your sales will come from their community. And so, if you, I mean, we went in with a 6,500 person mailing list, and the numbers that they say are usually like 5% of your mailing list will, will buy your thing. Hmm. Um, ours was a little higher because the people who subscribed to our mailing list clicked a button that said, I want to buy one. Um, and then we strung them along for two years. Um, <laughs> Whereas some people, their mailing lists are download my free ebook or yeah, you know, like th things like that. Hmm. Um, Very cool. Honest and genuine. Like if you want to do the the kind of Kickstarter we're doing, it's like be honest and genuine and truthful. Um, like try to be professional. In when people call you on things, it may take walking away for a minute before being able to come back and say. Either, you know, that's not how we think about it, or yeah, you're right. We here are the ways we think we might deal with that. We're not sure if any of them will work yet. Hmm. People are remarkably forgiving for it being clear that you thought about it and you not having an answer. Um, people are will never forgive you for ignoring. It. Yeah. I'd say like running a small company and running a big company mm -hmm. are really really different. And right. as a small company, like we don't have relationships with distributors such that we could get, you know, our keyword in yeah. every Walmart across the country, like Logitech does, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have, you know, huge supply chain networks, right. so like we don't have like a, a big marketing budget. Um, so you have yeah. to take the things you can do better than those guys, and basically that's like really care about what you're doing. Um, like we're not doing this. As our day job, this is sort of like our vocation. Yeah, um, it's our day be job. Be open and our about yeah. Job and <laughs> <laughs> like be open about what you're doing. Yeah. Um, like open hardware may not make sense for someone like Microsoft to do, but for us it's great. Like like our 3D printer that caught fire. Like the reason we still don't have a 3D printer is because that company went out of business, right? Oh and wow. A lot of Yikes. We don't intend to go out of business, but like mm -hmm. at least because it's open, yeah, someone else could take up the mantle if they wanted to. Right. Um, like it's yeah. yeah, just use your strengths, whatever they are. Right. Now there's another company in uh, Akron, uh, Tiny Circuits. Uh -huh. That I don't know. I don't know if you know about them, but Ken Burns yeah. is yeah. you know um, he actually has kind of taken his product from you know okay Kickstarter over to well yeah. it's available at Micro Center if you want to buy yeah. it today. Yeah. I mean I don't know the details of it, but I would yeah. love for you guys to yeah. chat. We, we, you know, we were, like, okay. I think it was timing great. didn't work out. Work out work for out. us to be able to yeah. do this there. Ken's yeah. doing Father's Day stuff. He's yeah. the one who recommended Sinhack. Sinhack, oh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, props to Ken for doing yeah. that, you know, so at least, I mean, yeah. you know, the show must go on. It's kind of yeah. like, you, you have to do it. So, yeah. so that's cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in today's age, you could just hang out, whatever, you know, Skype, you know, yeah. just to get some pointers, because yeah. he's already, his products are already, like, internationally yeah. sold at, like, all these different places, so... So once you're done with your delivery of the yeah. Kickstarter, you know, maybe that would be a good, like, kind of thread to start. Yeah. So. That's the other thing we've noticed is, like, mm -hmm. people have this natural desire to be helpful. And, yeah. You know, there's been some people where I've asked them for advice and they yeah. haven't given it to me. But for the yeah. most part, like, people want to help. And yeah. I mean, that goes both ways, right? Like, yes. Like, we've always been, yeah. like, I've reviewed a bunch of stuff for people. Yeah. I do a bunch of sort of informal right. advising for right. Startups that are like a year behind where we are. Yeah. Um, but it's like I know the problem. No, I, I, right that's now. that's highly valuable. Like you know, yeah. to actually have a, yeah. um, almost like a, you know, just like a thread, even yeah. if it's like an email thread. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're just kind of com just communicating offline. Um, so yeah, uh, what's your next stop? Uh, 
Where are you going um, after this? Our next stop is Toronto. Toronto, okay. And so we're going to get most of the way there tonight. Tonight? Um, but our first thing is until the morning. And what location is I mean, like, what the, so is there a hackerspace or so we're, a business? So we're actually meeting up at Matthias, the people who make our key switches. Oh, okay, um, okay. So we're tying in both vendor meeting and, and meetup. And meetup as well. I think we're doing an ergonomics lab. I think we're visiting an ergonomics yeah. lab. Ergonomics lab, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. There's one at UC Berkeley that does, they probably do like 40 percent of like the keyboard okay. research that actually is still getting published. Okay. Like, they're funded by every keyboard maker. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> wow. So What's the name again? Super objective. Um, David Rempel at the okay. University of California Berkeley okay. Economics Lab. Yeah. UCSB, cool. Yeah. No, uh, um, no, uh, UCB. UCB. UCB, okay. Yeah, okay. UCSB is further south. Further south. There's a okay. lot of universities <laughs> in California. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's so cool. Like they've got all yeah. these like machines that measure yeah, all the, the forces yeah. and you do. Actually anything. we have Gojo the 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 uh, 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 the sanit sanitizer company. Yeah. yeah, they have like robots like that has their sanitizers. They hit, keep hitting them. <laughs> it's really amazing <laughs> to see, you know, the how that works. Um, cool. So I mean, I, I'll do my best to uh, you know take these the feed and you know make it available in some fashion awesome. online, like as a playlist or something. Hopefully, as you're as you're putting miles on your car, <laughs> nice. I'll be putting miles on Time Warner Cable. Yeah. <laughs> you know? once, once, once you get it up, tell us when we yes. get the link for one of the updates. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, and whoever wants to check it out, they can. Cool, cool man. Nice. Awesome. Happy to answer more questions for folks. And we'll, Any other before questions? we go, definitely a tour. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? Did we cover can everything? You, can you do the one-on-one -on -one questions? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be questions on camera. Yeah, 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 absolutely.